Obviously, I'm a huge fan of hyperbaric, but is it possible to be getting too many sessions? Should you go every day ongoing for months and months at a time? Do you need to take breaks? Should you sleep inside your soft chamber or ultimately are there issues associated with that? That's what we're gonna talk about on this video. So overdoing a good thing, is it possible to get too much hyperbaric? And the answer is yes, but there's two conversations here. The first one is from a safety standpoint and the other one is really from an effectiveness standpoint. So let's break this down. Do you do it every day ongoing for months and months at a time? Most hyperbaric protocols in a clinical setting are really Monday through Friday. Why are they Monday through Friday? Because a lot of clinics are closed on Saturday and Sunday. So is that because it's the most effective way to do it? Or ultimately, is that just because of the timing of the clinic? I believe that most of the real answer there is just the timing of the clinic. So at the same time, there are what I call two phases of hyperbaric. There's the loading phase of hyperbaric and the unloading phase. In other words, the time you spend inside the chamber under pressure, breathing air or breathing oxygen, you are accumulating a surplus of oxygen that would otherwise not be possible. And that's the loading phase. You're loading with oxygen. The moment you exit that chamber, the pressure is no longer sufficient to keep that oxygen in your circulation. And so that oxygen starts trying to come out of your circulation and there's tremendous benefit to that release of oxygen into your system. Using it every day on and on and on and on, you're certainly gonna at least get the loading phase and then you're gonna get some amount of an unloading phase when you're getting out of that chamber. But ultimately, longer breaks are typically recommended. So in a soft chamber setting, that usually could look somewhere between, you know, 75 to 80 sessions or hours, I should say, worth of care. And then I would normally take at least a two to four week break at that point. So if you did use it, let's say seven days a week or even five or six days a week, consistently for up to around 80 hours, you should take a good two to four week break. It just allows your body to reset back to normal atmospheric pressure and normal oxygen levels. And it just allows your body to recalibrate and reset getting ready for the next round. Oftentimes I have found treating patients that we're pushing a protocol on and on and on, and we're not getting the same level of results. And the moment we pull back, all of a sudden it creates the opportunity for further gain. And so I do see that being productive and I do think it is important to be taking those types of periodic breaks. Many times when we start a protocol, we're pretty aggressive in terms of number of sessions, duration, frequency in the first three to four months. And that's usually to get to somewhere between those 60 to 80 hours. And then often we follow that up with breaks. And then we look for either maintenance type protocols or these periodic boosts of hyperbaric where we'll go weeks without it, and then we'll do 20 to 30 or 40 hours with it, and then we'll go a few weeks without it. And so I'm gonna encourage you to do something similar. I don't believe that hyperbaric seven days a week indefinitely is really the good call. I think taking those periodic breaks is really important. Likewise, sleeping in the chamber. Is it dangerous? Well. Listen, you are sleeping inside a pressurized device. The pressurized device does need to continually run. There are potential consequences with, you know, a power outage or the compressor kicking off and you're still inside. You know, there's, there's a lot of things to think about. Generally speaking, we don't ever recommend sleeping in the chamber. And one, again, because of the safety issue, but two, again, because of the cumulative effect. In other words, when you first go into the chamber and you're saturated with oxygen at normal atmospheric pressure, your first hour or two could be pretty productive. In other words, you're absorbing all of this extra oxygen in in those first couple hours. At some point, you're going to hit not saturation because your cells are going to metabolize oxygen so quickly that you're probably never actually fully saturated with oxygen. However, you are going to hit a point of diminishing return. It's not like more time is always going to equal more oxygen. And you do want to give yourself these deloading periods. And so if I was going to be pretty aggressive with a protocol, that would look more like 90 minutes twice a day with four to six hours in between, then it would look three hours at a time or more, four or five hours at a time. I do believe that after you hit that somewhere between, for most people, somewhere between two to three hour mark, there's this diminishing return where more time is just more time. It's not really more valuable. So in those cases, it would be much better if your plan was like, listen, I want two hours a day. I want three hours a day. It would actually be extremely more effective to do an hour to 90 minutes 
come out, depressurize for four hours or six hours, lose some of that accumulated oxygen, go back in a second time for 60 or 90 minutes, and really utilize the double session mentality over the long duration mentality whenever possible. I think that that's a much more effective protocol. If we're talking about soft chamber use, then we're really not gonna be talking about oxygen toxicity. In a soft chamber at the pressures and the percentages of oxygen that are available, it would be very difficult to hit points of oxygen toxicity. So we're really not concerned about that. It's more just the amount of time being in the chamber and making sure you're getting the most benefit possible from the chamber. Also in a soft chamber environment, we're not necessarily concerned about other pressure-related issues like, let's say, decompression sickness. If you look at typical dive tables and you look at 10 feet of seawater equivalent, which is what a soft chamber will typically run at, there's really no time period where you've exceeded the no decompression limit requiring you know, decompression stops from 10 feet of water. And so what that means is you could stay in a chamber an hour, two hours, three hours, and ultimately depressurize the chamber at a normal pace and not worry about getting decompression sickness or getting bent. So again, it's not dangerous from those standpoints. It's not dangerous from decompression sickness or the bends. It's not dangerous from an oxygen toxicity standpoint. It's still just not recommended that you spend four to six or eight hours in a chamber continuously, especially when we know that the benefits are so much greater by going in for short durations, coming out and going back in. We are on a mission to make sure that the people looking for this information have access to it. I know that there's a lot of content out there and I know that it could be very confusing when people are trying to find the answers that they're looking for. And it's really important for me that those people can find these answers. So when you like it, when you subscribe and when you share these videos, that helps the people looking for this content know that they're getting a trustworthy source and they're getting the information that they're trying to find. So please do that and help us help other people. And also with regard to these long durations of treatment, either long durations of singular treatments or if we're talking about long durations of sessions over time without any breaks, there's not an enormous amount of research to either prove or not that one is definitely going to be more efficient or more productive than the other. However, there is some research on a few concepts. One is this hyperoxia, hypoxia paradox is what it's called, which is, again, there's this time you spend in the chamber and this time you spend out of the chamber. And what that does is it creates a wave of increasing and decreasing oxygen levels versus increasing oxygen levels, keeping them high for a period of time and then coming down. And that wave of increasing and decreasing oxygen does seem to be exceptionally more effective than just going to a certain oxygen level, staying there for a long period of time and coming out. So what that does is it really drives the idea that intermittent sessions of allowing the oxygen levels to go up and down, getting in the chamber, coming out of the chamber, getting in the chamber, coming out of the chamber, does seem to have a much better effect than just staying in the chamber for long periods of time. Next, there's also some research to show that when you take breaks from hyperbaric, you also do get increasing benefit. In other words, you've done a series of treatments. And most of us have seen that in a series of treatments, it takes time for a lot of those benefits to start to accumulate. There's a delay from the time you start doing sessions until the time you start seeing the benefit. But once you get that process started and you've now created momentum, once you pull the therapy and you take one of those two to four week breaks, we also have a lot of research to show that even though you've pulled the therapy, you still get an increased rise in a lot of the benefits. During the sessions, you're stimulating a lot of systems, chemical messengers that help mobilize stem cells. And after a month of use, if you were to measure the stem cell response, it's really not that high. But after two months of use, it's actually typically already starting to multiply by two to four times greater. And in many cases, if you pulled the therapy after two to three months for a good four to six weeks, and you tested after not doing treatment for another, let's say, period of time of four to six weeks, you can still see those stem cells increasing. In other words, there's a delay from the time you start treatment to the time you see the response. There's also a delay when you stop treatment that you should still see an improvement. So to really understand how much benefit you're getting, those breaks really allow your body physiologically just to catch up to all the momentum of changes, regeneration, healing that you've stimulated as a result of all the sessions that you did for the months leading up to that break. And so I think it's a great check-in time to really understand what the full value is. 
And often, at least in the clinical environment, we use the patient's, how did you do in the first 10 to 20 hours? How did you do in the second 20 to 40 hours, let's say, or, or 40 to 60 hours? And then how did you do when we took that break? And the answers to those questions, whether that's through testing that we do in the office or just through conversation of understanding how the patients are doing, that helps us actually create and generate what their follow-up protocols are going to look like. And so once we understand that full spectrum and that break is a big part of it, then we can really create protocols that are meaningful going forward for that patient too. So I hope that helps you understand. Just because hyperbaric is a great tool doesn't mean more is always better. It's not more pressure is better. It's not more time is better. It's the right pressure and the right time, the right duration, the right frequency for each person. And we need to think through these details to really come up with effective and meaningful protocols for everybody that we're working with. And then at the end of all this, is there a time where you're just finished with sessions? You just don't need sessions anymore. You've done hyperbaric, you got the benefit, and now you can just stop. So in some cases, the answer is absolutely yes to that. And in some cases, the answer is it really just depends on the issues. If you're talking about healing from a certain issue, like an injury, right? The injury was a moment in time. The trauma had a beginning and an end. And once you heal and you've gotten to a point where you're happy with what you've created, you should be able to keep and maintain that indefinitely. And so in those cases, if you want to discontinue hyperbaric because you got the benefit you were looking for, and it's a scenario where you should be able to keep those benefits now long-term, certainly you could be finished with the therapy. In other cases, let's say with certain conditions that aren't necessarily going away, we'll use autoimmunity as one example. This is not the cure for autoimmunity. Though many people with autoimmune conditions use hyperbaric and see certain benefits, what it ultimately often will mean is that we use it rather intensely to help a patient transition through certain issues and get to a point where they see resolution of certain symptoms. And at the same time, if their disease is not going to go away, there could be a time period where maintenance treatments are really important, in which case you absolutely might be using this tool months and months and years, and that would be appropriate. But again, it's typically not going to be every day, seven days a week, you know, for years on end. Either there's going to be strategic breaks during the week, like we're going to use it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but not Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we're strategically taking breaks in between in the week, or we're doing protocols for four to six weeks or eight to 12 weeks, you know, six or seven days a week, but then we're going to take these two to three week breaks. So even in somebody who's going to use it long-term for years and years and years to come, there's still going to be strategic breaks both during the week in between sessions and or larger breaks in between protocols while we're helping to keep their system, you know, more balanced and less inflamed. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope that's helpful for you. And I hope that answered the question, is there too much hyperbaric? We'll see you next time, next video. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath, or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.